All right, guys. So some news dropped uh, on what's going on in Ukraine right now. Now, of course, there's still a horrendous war going on there. Russia um, illegally invaded Ukraine. And it appears like, based on everything I've seen recently, we're at some semblance of a permanent stalemate. My understanding is that Russia has sort of pulled back from the more western portions of Ukraine, uh, effectively conceding that they can't really hold that. But there's still a lot of fighting going on uh, in the Donbass region, and it looks like Russia is really not going to give up trying to take over the Donbass region. Uh, well, the news that came out today, Ukraine votes to restrict Russian books and music. Ukraine is closing the book on scores of Russian authors and turning a deaf ear to its foes' music, too. The Ukrainian parliament Sunday approved a law that stops the printing of books by Russian citizens unless they give up their Russian passport and become Ukraine citizens. The ban only applies to those authors who held Russian citizenship after the 1991 collapse of the Soviet Union. Books printed in Russia, its ally Belarus, and accompanied Ukrainian territory also can no longer be imported and special permission is required for the importation of books in Russian from any other countries. Another law passed Sunday puts the brakes on music by post-1991 Russian citizens played by media outlets and on public transportation. It also forces television and radio broadcasts to play more Ukrainian language speech and music content. The laws are designed to help Ukrainian authors share quality content with the widest possible audience, which after the Russian invasion do not accept any Russian creative product on a physical level. Ukraine Culture Minister Alexander Tachenko said, The laws will go into effect once Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky signs them as expected. The new mandates are the latest push by Ukraine to rid itself of Russia's influence over the country in a process dubbed de-Russification. Jeez. Ukraine argues that the moves are necessary to undo centuries of Russian policies meant to erase Ukrainian culture. While Russia has said such measures only oppress the large number of Russian speakers in Ukraine. So I also have, there's one more for you here as well. Let's take a look. Ukraine bans pro-Russian opposition political party. A court decision indicated that all of the party's assets and property within Ukraine would immediately be forfeited and given to the state. Uh, so, a lot going on there, man. A lot going on. Banning Russian books and music. Um, banning pro-Russian uh, opposition party. Um, I don't agree. I, I don't agree. Look, I understand uh, there's an illegal and offensive war being waged by Russia against Ukraine. I get that. They're to blame. Uh, regardless of the uh, surrounding circumstances, regardless of what one might think about NATO expansion, etc., you can't illegally invade a country and try to annex it. You just, like, you can't do that. That's not the way it works. That's what the U.S. effectively did to one extent or another in Iraq. It was an illegal invasion, and then we occupied it. Um, and now this is Russia playing the role of the U.S. in Iraq, except it's Russia doing it in Ukraine. And so they are to blame for that. I think there's no way around that. At the same time, you don't respond to the ultimate of authoritarian moves, which is an illegal war, you don't respond to authoritarianism with your own authoritarianism. And that's what this is. I mean, this is, even if you agree with it, and maybe there are some people out there who agree with it, um, at least acknowledge the reality that this is authoritarian. That, you know, this is clearly uh, against freedom. And one of the things that we've witnessed since this war has been waged is that I, I was shocked at how quickly everybody went full authoritarian you know uh looking at the united states and or various sport you know sport organizations worldwide like banning russian players and banning the russian national anthem at different events um i mean fuck wimbledon they banned russian players and that was a tennis major, and then they lost their world ranking points as a result of it. But this is like, point is, when you look at what Russia did with independent media, for example, they banned like all independent media. They, they hard, cracked down on social media hard. So Russia went authoritarian, and now here's an example of Ukraine going authoritarian. Um, that's never the answer, man. It's never the answer. Because it's wrong in principle. 
And so if Ukraine wants to make the argument to the world, look, I mean, obviously we're the good guy. We're the victims here. They invaded us. But here we represent freedom and democracy. There they do not. It's like, okay, well, this is quite a way of showing it. It's quite a way of showing it by banning Russian books and music and banning, you know, opposition political parties. I understand how somebody in Ukraine um, who's, you know, a, a firsthand victim of what's going on here might feel like, fuck yeah, you know, let's rid ourselves of all Russian influence and kick out, uh, you know, whatever, Russian people and ban the, uh, the pro-Russian party. I understand why one would think that, but that also doesn't make it right. And it's not right. I mean, look, what happened um, during World War II in the U.S.? We did Japanese internment. You know, Japan attacked us at Pearl Harbor. So you could look at that and say, hey, we're the victim. So what, since we're the victim, then we get to victimize others, even people who are innocent? And that's exactly what we did when we locked, uh, you know, we did Japanese internment. And it's just never the answer, man. So uh, it's a shame. Look, I really hope... I'll end on this note. I really hope that we get to a place where there is an off-ramp and there is a path for peace. Because, guys, Russia has nuclear weapons, okay? And they're an isolated country right now, and they're probably scared to one extent or another. We're funding a proxy war against them by propping Ukraine up with billions and billions of dollars in weapons. Y you know, best case scenario, we have a permanent stalemate. Worst case scenario... The fighting spills over into other countries, and there's an escalation, and then potentially the nukes are in the air. So we need to provide an off-ramp for Vladimir Putin, and we need to have a path to peace. And the only way out of it is diplomacy and negotiated settlement. And whenever you do that, there's going to be uh, camps on both sides that are really pissed off and not happy. But you know what? Pissed off, not happy people with some sort of an agreement, with some concessions, is better than uh, pissed off, unhappy people who escalate further. So we got to try to do it, but I'm not sure Biden's a partner in peace. I'm not sure uh, Putin's a partner in peace, but they both need to be or, you know, it could get a hell of a lot worse. If you want to see me and Crystal Ball interview legends like Noam Chomsky, Cornell West and more, subscribe to Crystal Kyle and Friends on Substack. Five dollars a month gets you the video version a day early. Remember, we take zero ad dollars for this podcast or you can sign up on Substack for free and get the audio version a day later. Link in the video description box below.